how to know you're losing weight without a scale. Have you ever wondered this? Let's talk about it. In this video, we'll talk about the pros and cons of the scale. Next, we'll cover the different ways you can track your weight loss without the scale. And last, you'll hear Code Red's stance on the scale. How do I feel about it? When I was looking through my notes last night, getting ready to film for this video today, I was uh, like, you know, <laughs> with nobody to keep me in check when I'm sitting in my hotel room by myself, I am like going off in my head. I'll tell you what, bleh, 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 the skill, bleh, 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 just going through and I said, okay, wait, Christy, hold on. Cause there are plenty of companies out there who demonize the scale. Like they say, throw your scale away. You're more than a number. I even did a photo shoot campaign where I took four girls, myself and three others. We all weighed 155 pounds and we all had drastically different body shapes. And we showed what the same weight looked like on four different body shapes. And it was great. But at the top we put be more than a number, you know, and we did this whole campaign, like you're more than a number. And since then I'm like, yeah, I mean, I get what we were saying, you know, and I understand when people say that, but the reality is the scale matters. The scale is not the end all be all, but the scale matter. So you're wanting to know how to lose weight without the scale. All right. Pros and cons to the scale. The pro, the scale is going to be your first line of defense. The scale is going to be the first thing that gives you immediate quantifiable feedback that whatever you did yesterday should be either avoided or repeated. Let me just give you some insight on the scale here. You can get a good digital scale for like 20 bucks off Amazon. I mean, come on, make sure that you have a good scale. That's not from 1974. One that isn't rusty around the dial. Just get yourself a $20 Walmart scale. Make sure that you change the batteries. You have fresh batteries in there and that you weigh yourself on a hard surface. Always weigh yourself naked. Always get up in the morning. You walk to the bathroom, you strip down naked, you go potty first, you strip down naked, you get on the scale naked. That's what we call a dry weight. And then you pick up your bottle of water and you start drinking your water. And that's the last time you get on the scale for that day. Never, 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 never weigh yourself at night. Never weigh yourself at night. You want to be on suicide watch? Weigh yourself at night because I'm telling you, you're going to be eight to 10 pounds heavier. If you're drinking your water the way you should. You're eating food. You're drinking your water. You have natural inflammation that sets in during the day. Don't weigh yourself at night. Come on. But the scale is going to let you know if the scale is up, there is a reason for that. I can tell you if the scale has ever been up with me, I know exactly why I, it's not a mystery to me. Like, Oh my gosh, why is the scale up? Bull crap. I cut too low on sleep last night. I know what I did. I have a new puppy and the puppy asked to go out three times. I got up and then I thought I heard the, the puppy throwing up. And so I was kind of on high alert all night long. And then I looked at my Fitbit read out the next morning. It gave me a, 67 on my sleep score or something crazy like that. Four and a half hours of sleep. Yeah. Thank you. New puppy. I know my weight's going to be up for that reason. If my weight is up then, and I got a good night's sleep, maybe I cut too low on my water. There is a reason why your weight is up. So the scale is not a bad thing. There are companies out there that have done these live events and they've done, they've launched these huge campaigns about throwing away the scale. And I simply can't get behind that. The scale is one of the many methods we use to measure good health and progress. Now, what are the cons of the scale? Probably I can only really think of one. And that is that the scale does not measure muscle. People always say, well, muscle weighs more than fat. No, no muscle does not weigh more than fat. Weight is weight. No matter if you're talking about a pound of bricks or a pound of feathers, there's still a pound. What you're trying to say is muscle is more dense than fat. It's going to take up less room. So for the same amount of weight on the scale, you're going to notice it takes up less room. Me. I just had my body fat tested here recently by a professional exercise physiologist, and I have 118 pounds of muscle on me. So I am in the top 
I think half a percent of all women in the United States, I am very dense. I have a tremendous amount of muscle on me. The exercise physiologist said, Christy, realistically, you maybe can gain six to eight pounds more muscle and that's gonna take you a lot of work and a lot of weightlifting and a lot of protein. So when I get on the scale and it says 155 or 156 pounds and you stand me up next to somebody else who is the same height, but maybe 135 pounds, like my one of my coaches, Coach Andrea, we're almost the same age, we're the same exact height, and I outweigh her by over 20 pounds. But yet, I have much more defined muscles. I have six pack abs, I have separation through the deltoids, through the, uh, I've got striated muscles in some places. It's muscle. So it's not gonna weigh the muscle. That's why I always encourage people to get a body fat percentage test once they get to maintenance. You don't need to worry about that while you're in weight loss mode. But if you really wanna get a true, true number of fat and muscle and where you need to be, go to a bod pod or go to some sort of a body fat test from a professional at a university or someone who understands how to interpret that information and find out how much muscle versus how much fat that you have instead of just relying on what the scale is saying because the scale doesn't know your body composition. The scale isn't gonna know if you're having a major water fluctuation. If you're PMS, ladies, we know we can fluctuate six to eight pounds with our monthly cycle. And yeah, the scale is gonna is gonna show an increase and we're gonna be freaked out about that. But it, it the scale can't tell us, hey, you're having a major fluid fluctuation here. You're having just some problems. You're retaining some, some fluid. You know, you're gonna, it, it can't tell us that. It's only giving us the amount of gravitational pull that our bodies have on the earth. It doesn't tell us why. So you want to keep that in mind if it's coming around your monthly cycle. Of course, I always tell people, listen, your ladies, your periods are not a, it's not a green light for you to go off at a, uh, face down in a, in a pint of haagen -Dazs. Don't give me that bologna. I couldn't help it. That's just how I was having cravings. Now you don't, you can have cravings. You don't give in to cravings. That's not a green light for you just to go off the rails just because you're having PMS symptoms and you're having cravings, whatever. Your weight's gonna fluctuate because of fluid. The scale can't tell you why. It's just telling you that you're retaining a bit of water. Before I go to my next point, I wanna hear from you. I want you to comment below and tell me what your impression of the scale is. A lot of people, boy, they don't wanna step on that scale and maybe you were one of them. Maybe you were like, nope, 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 nope. Comment below, tell me what you think. I know a lot of people don't own scales because women are like, I don't even wanna know. I don't even wanna know. And they won't get on the scale. And I've gone through down times in my life. I've gone through depression. I mean, March of 2020, when we first got locked down, I mean, I spiraled just like a lot of you guys did too. I mean, my spiral only lasted a day or two. Some of you guys, it lasted six, seven, eight months. But I understand the feeling of being depressed and, and being sad and, and missing my friends and missing my activities. And I didn't want to step on the scale. I get that. A lot of you guys are like, I don't want to own a scale because I don't want my daughter to think that that is her worth, that she puts her self-worth in that number. And a lot of times when people are off track, they justify not getting on the scale by saying that, well, the scale doesn't tell that, you know, the scale makes me feel like less of a person. No, Karen, the scale does not make you feel like less of a person. The scale is just giving you quantifiable feedback that you got to quit going face down in a, in a bag of snack will cookies. Like knock that crap off, grow up, pull up your big girl panties and start facing the truth that sure shoving crap in your pie hole that doesn't belong there. It's not the scale's fault and nothing makes you feel any way. So don't sit there and say, the scale makes me feel like less of a person. That's not how it works. So the scale is one thing of many ways we use to measure progress and to get you back on track. So let's say that you don't have a scale and you don't want to buy one and you still want to lose weight. Okay, how do you measure progress? How do you know if you're losing weight? A couple of different ways. Jeans out of the dryer. It's a little bit of a phrase, like it's kind of just a, a phrase that we use, jeans out of the dryer. Your clothes, how are your clothes fitting? Look, jeans out of the dryer don't lie, they don't. You know what I'm talking about, you slide the jeans up and before they wouldn't zip and they wouldn't button and now they do. You're losing weight, honey. You're doing a good job. Another way to measure your progress is the tape measure. A simple 
tape measure. Measure, you can measure your arm, your forearm, your, your neck, your bust, your waist, your hips, your thigh, your calf. There are lots of different ways that you can, and you should be doing this by the way, you should be taking measurements even if you are going using this scale. It's always good to use different methods of progress. Another method is progress photos. Yes. Taking a photo of yourself, like a bathroom selfie or turning the phone around and setting the timer and stepping back from it and taking a full body picture in your bra and panties or your two piece swimsuit or guys, if I got any guys watching, you know, in your swim trunks, nobody needs to ever see it, but you're going to see it. And you're going to be able to compare last Friday to this Friday or last month to this month. Oh, I do see the change. Yeah. Progress photos are powerful. They're really a good indicator of how well you're doing. So those are other methods you can use to measure progress and to tell you a little bit of feedback if you're losing weight. So how does code red feel about the scale? Well, I think you can probably guess that I'm not anti-scale. I'm not. We weigh ourselves every single morning. We do. During the 10 pound takedown challenge, I actually give you a weight tracking sheet and I want you to write down your weight every single morning for 30 days during the challenge. I want you to be held accountable and I want you to see that number. I want you also to see that number going down because it's really motivational when you see that. It makes you want to keep going when you watch that number drop and it might only be dropping like 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, but it's dropping. You're Remember, we don't care that it goes steady every day. We care that at day one and day 30, there's a difference. It might look like this, like a mountaintop. That's all right. But you started up here and now you're down here. That's all that matters. And that comes from the scale. We weigh ourselves every day, but on a custom program, you're going to actually turn in your weight to me every Friday. So yeah, the, at Code Red, we're not anti-scale. We're also not putting so much stock in the scale that we ignore the other good measures of progress, like progress photos and the tape measure and different methods like that. So if you're interested in joining our next challenge, you can do so. We have one starting soon and you'll spend 30 days with me. We're going to talk about the scale. We're going to talk about a lot of things. Lose at least 10 pounds in 30 days without shakes, pills, diet foods, and exercise. I'm excited to see you on the next challenge and I'll see you right here on the next video.